G'day folks, for this afternoon's little equipment autopsy we have four different solar controllers. These are solar pool heating controllers. Uh, we replace a lot of them at my work during uh, refits and repair jobs. And uh, yeah, I've got that one, Sun Lover Heating. It looks an awful lot like a... Uh, what is it? Space Age Electronics branded one with a new decal on it. I'm pretty sure that'll be a Space Age one as well. I've done one of them before. That one's a bit different. It's got a proper LCD in it rather than a uh, LED like the other ones. Um, is it made by? Uh, it just says pool control. Solar oh Solar Charge. That's the company. It's a very basic controller. There's no uh, electronic menus or anything like that. I don't have a lot of thermocouples, or oh, I don't have any thermocouples for that one. Uh, if I know what values they are, I'd be willing to bet most of these still work. They've just been made redundant by a new system. Uh, that one there, I've got no idea who makes the electronics. We're going to find out. It's for Smith Solar Heating. Mm, same sort of deal. You've got your high and low. They're all temperature differential switches. Uh, this one here came off the gla evacuated glass tube water heating system. Uh, good source of cable glands and bits and pieces, that's about it. Again, I've only got one thermocouple. I can measure what value it is and find out what it is, but the other two are missing. But that's from a pro proper evacuated glass tube uh, heating system. So, yeah, let's uh, open, in open them up and have a look. Pretty sure this one will be space age. It might not be, but let's find out. Okay, well I've supplied power to all of them. Uh, so far this one's completely dead. So is this one. I've got nothing on the display. That one's not doing anything. That one's working. It's actually reading, is it reading off that thermocouple? Let's warm that thermocouple up. Yeah, there we go. That's reading off the, this one would have been connected to the pump, it's the short one. The long lead goes all the way up to the roof, to the solar collectors. It tells it roof temperature and when the roof temperature rises to a certain point it turns the pump on, pumps water through the hot collector tubes and then heats the pool. So right now this is actually reading uh, pool temperature. Yeah, you've got pool temp thermocouple and roof temp thermocouple which is up on the roof. And obviously that one's been cut off and discarded. So this one's actually working. Uh, this one here... What's it telling me? HWC is alright. That's probably indicating that the roof and tank thermocouples are open circuit. So. Let's go HWC. Nope. Next. Test. Okay. Pump relay works. Need to turn the pump on if it was connected. Next. No. I don't think it's going to respond until I connect up thermocouples to roof and tank and unfortunately I don't have either of them. I could probably put a resistor across them to trick it but... Oh there we go. Oh no. It was showing 19 which is probably the temperature of that thermocouple but it won't let me go to the next menu because it's showing error on roof and tank. Oh well. I'll open it up and have a look. That one could be handy. That one's still reading all right. If I can find out what resistance that... Uh, well, it's not so much a thermocouple, it's a thermistor, a thermal resistor. I shouldn't really call them thermocouples unless they're maybe like these ones which use four wires. Uh, so do... no, no, they're two wire. They'll be thermistors. I'll measure the resistance and if I've got two of them I can use this as a uh, temperature differential switch for any kind of project that I make. I think I already have one in storage somewhere, but most of them, like these, I find are dead. They've been replaced because, well, they're faulty. 
But that's just sort of how it goes in the pool industry. If somebody else's equipment breaks down, you replace it with a better one. Okay, well it seems like someone had been inside this one and unplugged the ribbon cable. <laughs> That'd explain why it was dead. So it's just going through its startup sequence. Auto, pump or manual. It's not even trying to trigger the uh, relay and pump manual. Mind you, it's throwing error code because there's no uh, thermistors attached to it. Mm. It's not a uh, space age either, it's actually made by Dontek Electronics. Mm. Yeah, Dontek Proprietary Limited, even the PCB mask has their phone number and everything on it. It's all uh, specific to that brand. Time out, jumpers or something. Flow switch on or off. Oh yeah, it's got a few little features. It'd be interesting to find out what the uh, so Mister ratings for these are. Got a tiny little super cap memory backup. Not a lot else. There'll be a display, a couple of display driver. Um, ICs under there, but that's about it. As far as the rest of it goes, it's just a basic uh, iron core transformer, straight out linear power supply, that's it. Mains transformer, pump relay, bridge rectifier, and linear power supply and filter. 5 volts at most, I'd say. Maybe a little 5 volt regulator in there. Maybe 12, what's the coil? Coil's 12 volts, so it's 12 volt. So, anyway, that's the first one. That one there, they seem to have plugged it up with uh, little bits of plastic, probably hot glue. I'll pick them out and uh, we'll have a look at what that is. That one's definitely dead and no one's been inside it, so we'll see how and why it's dead. Oh wow, now we're getting into the interesting stuff. This looks like a J-Car kit. <laughs> There's a very crudely glued into place LCD panel. Now it looks like a two wire interface as well. You've got two wires going to the battery holder on the back, obviously feeding it power. And there's a uh, little two wire interface going to the LCD. That's it. Must be serial or parallel controlled, uh, I'd say serially controlled uh, LCD. And even this, the little resistor bodgy jobs and the board itself, it looks like a kit, something you'd buy as a kit from J-Car. Yeah, that's really cool. It's old, I'll give it that much. But good God, we've gone from something with its own, uh, own uh, PCB masking and everything down to something like this. And you can see water's gotten in. I'll be willing to bet part of the power supply is dead. The LCD is interesting, it's just, it's just two wire, I think. Or is it, uh, is it wire and then shield? I don't know. Yeah. Where's the main IC? What is that? What the hell is controlling this thing? gut it and find out. I'd be willing to bet most of the processing is actually on display. It's probably only reading one thing. It's just reading pool temperature. Obviously there's no control to tell you anything else. So that will... Oh, that's gonna, That's just going to be a um, a readout from one of the thermocouples or thermistors. The rest of that is going to be uh, just to control the relay. A switch. Yeah, I know what they've done now. This is just a little off-the-shelf, off the uh, like a cool room thermometer. You put batteries in it and shove it in the back of the cool room, or the front front panel of the cool room, and then you take the thermistor and stick that inside the cavity so that you can tell uh, how cold it is, or how hot it is if it's a hot room. Yeah, I know what they've done here. <laughs> That's so crude. Look at the lead solder stuck in the plastic. God. 
Yeah, this is like a DIY kit job. Except it looks like it's actually been sold by a uh, legitimate company. Oh well, you gotta do what you gotta do to survive. That's kind of special. I do like that that display though. I'm gonna put power to it and see if it still works. I'll wrap the batteries out of a uh, dead TV remote and uh, yeah, see what we can do. Yeah, there's a board out of it. It's certainly primitive looking. They could have at least given their employees a uh, component lead bending jig to get the leads sort of evenly and nicely bent. Funny thing is the mask does have their name on it, so it's not just a regular, like a generic off-the-shelf kit. It actually says solar charge on it. I'll admit it's a decent looking PCB, nice and simple. Componentry wise, well, it's a little bit sloppy. Particularly that diode there, the leads are way longer than they need to be. <laughs> Oh well, what do you do? It's obviously an early one. Oh look at that, Alec Transformers. Yeah, that's a pretty old one. If the relay is alright I'll keep it. Although it looks awfully black in there. Yeah. There's a lot of sooting from the main contact. Actually that's on the other side. I wonder if it's actually welded shut. Yeah, screw it. Not worth keeping, I've got plenty of relays like that. But that's the LCD readout. Obviously you've got battery there and these two here will just be a thermocouple and that'll give you a temperature readout. So that's all that is, that's just a basic freezer thermometer or generic panel thermometer. Oh, that's easy enough. Let's find a battery, at least one battery by the looks of it and uh, I'll uh, see if it still works. Well, that display was dead. Nothing I could do can bring, bring it back, so let's move on to the other one. Ooh, wow, this one's kind of a mess inside. That's the uh, Smith's one. Looks like it's had ants or worms or something get into here. That's really nasty. I'm not going to be bothering to keep this one if this is the case. It's this messy. Um, yeah. Ultronic transformer, fairly standard relay just like the other ones. Uh, it also has gas pack switching as well, so that, hence the dual outlets. Uh, this board here, it's all control. It's got a Zillog Z86E0408 PSC. That looks like the ROM chip, EEPROM. You flash that for whatever version it is. Board itself, version 3.1 by the looks of it. Interesting little super cap backup. It's a token 5.5 volt, 0.1 farad little mini super cap. I'm going to pick that off there. It's even got a little diode and a Dallas DS1302 chip on it. I'll have to look that one up. I usually see these on board, but I don't see them with that kind of arrangement. Interesting stuff. That voltage regulation, that's a 5 volt regulator by the looks of it. Um, yeah, it's a mess. Look at the whiskers between the pins. It probably wouldn't be lead free solder back in the day, but still, there's some interesting little whiskers going on between those LED pins. It's kind of nasty. And again, we've got display drivers, or two on the other side actual displays in units and tens. Not an awful lot to it. I'm not even going to bother pulling the board off. This thing's kind of icky inside. I'm just going to take that off and that'll do it. There's nothing really else worth salvaging. We'll move on to this one here next. Okay, this solar stat control is definitely much more industrialized. Much more better built. Uh, it's still a single sided PCB, not even a single bodge wire on it, which is good. Uh, decent relays, tiny little switch mode power supply, there's no obviously no linear transformer or anything like that. Uh, it's got some Phoenix, Phoenix connectors here which are quite handy to have. Same with all the glands and everything, even just the cable entries into the box are very good. It's also got a rubber gasket around the outer housing. A lot of them do, but some of them don't. And they usually let in critters and moisture. But this one's well built. 
So that's all sensors in into there. ICs. So there's a microchip PIC 16F88. There's an ST M74HC 238B1. Yeah, I'm guessing that's display driver since it's all connected up through to there. That one there will be, uh, it's all to do with the uh, sensing input, I guess. One of them will be a small microcontroller, probably the PIC. That little microchip PIC chip will be the main um, processor, I guess you'd call it. I mean, the current controllers that we use at work have uh, microchip brand PIC chips in them, but they're a uh, surface mount package, not a, not a through-hole package like these ones. They're a different little animal. They still use a fairly small switch mode power supply, which sometimes puts a fair bit of noise back into the mains. Like I can't have a radio plugged in on the same outlet as some of our controllers. And we're also getting uh, interference issues, like long sensor cable runs, particularly the roof sensor, seem to be acting as antennas and throwing so much noise back into the controller, the thing just starts playing up. So I'm going to be playing around with um, a little ferrite clip on ferrite uh, inductors, noise filters for a little while I think. Uh, I have mentioned it, I brought a few samples in from into work from uh, old televisions, uh, a lot of plasma TVs and projection TVs, in this case it doesn't, but a lot of the time you'll find a loom like that has a, a uh, ferrite inductor clamped over it. Even the speakers sometimes you'll find there's a ferrite inductor clamped onto it to suppress any extra noise so I'm collecting as many of those as I can and we'll just try and deploy a few in the field and just see what they do because on long sensor runs we seem to be having uh, noise coming back and actually interfering with the sensitive little pick chip. That and it could be power supply noise because if the power supply is put enough noise back into the mains to mess up my uh, the audio coming out of the radio, FM radio, then it could also be interfering with the pick as well. They were built, they're built to a price rather than a quality um, target. They're probably, I think they're industry leading as far as high tech goes, but in some cases I think good old fashioned linear power supplies and basic analog controls seem to win out a bit more than uh, the really high tech stuff. But I don't know, I haven't used one of these before so I don't know uh, how good they are. But the fact that this has options for wireless RS-232 and RS-485 tells me it's probably a pretty good thing. I've never seen a normal um, pool controller with that, but this remember this was an evacuated glass tube heating system controller. Uh, it's designed to boil water and store it in a boiler tank essentially. It's not just your average uh, pool warmer. So yeah, that's not a bad little unit actually. I'm going to harvest it for parts like these little dangle leads. and. Uh, mains leads, I've already harvested a couple of the other ones for mains leads and a thermos, thermistor. The rest of it's pretty much useless, I mean I don't have the rest of the uh, thermistors. Uh, yeah, I guess I could throw it on the shelf for the time being, I don't need the parts. Yeah, screw it, I'll throw it on the shelf for the time being. If I can find out, I'll pull this off and measure it and find out if I can get some from work and if that's the case then I might be able to use it for something. I'll get rid of the big chunky old ones and just use this even though I just shat all over the uh, modern <laughs> switch mode designs but I, um, this one has more features so it wins <laughs> like buying a TV you buy the one with the most features you don't want the standard definition one with three different inputs you want the uh, ultra high definition with 3D and smart TV capabilities and USB and infrared and ultrasonic and mind control capabilities, you know. <laughs> you want the one with a lot. Same with buying cars, everyone wants something with everything. Until that everything breaks down and you're looking for a solution which costs more than the vehicle itself. <laughs> now, that's enough rambling for tonight. Now, I'll see you later and uh, take care. Thanks for watching.